What's up fans and welcome to TV Box Up, the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes, mini PCs and accessories. On today's video, we have a powerful Windows 11 mini PC from the brand Ace Magician and I must admit, I'm quite excited to test this one, especially with alternative operating systems such as Android x86 and Fido S because it's built with an 11th generation Intel Core i5 CPU with a boost clock speed of up to 4.2 GHz. This is the Ace Magician TK11 and in this review, we'll look at all that it has to offer on the Windows 11 and what happens when you convert it into a super high performance Android TV box, so stay tuned. The TK11 A0 is classified as a high performance mini PC and its price reflects that and here is why. This SoC comprises of an 11th generation Intel Core i5 1135G7 CPU with a base clock speed of 2.4 GHz and a boost clock speed of up to 4.2 GHz. Now that's more processing power than your average desktop PC or laptop. Its GPU component is the Intel Iris Xe graphics processor with a max dynamic frequency of up to 1.3 GHz. It provides 4K 2160p resolution at 60Hz on the HDMI port and 8K 4230p at 60Hz on the display port. It has OpenGL ES version 4.6 support and can deliver 4 extended displays at the same time. This model comes with 16 GB of 3200 LPDDR4 RAM via two RAM modules and can accommodate up to 64 GB. For storage, this model comes with a 512 GB M.2 NVMe SSD. It has dual band Wi Fi 6 technology with Bluetooth 5.2 support. It delivers Dolby Atmos and DTS audio and has a built in speaker. The housing is well ventilated and has a powerful built in cooling fan. And for security, it has a fingerprint sensor on the power button. In this purchase, you have your standard mini PC contents which includes the TK11 mini PC itself. You get one HDMI cable, a 19 volts 3.4 amps 65 watts power adapter, the power cable for the adapter, a bracket for mounting to the back of a PC monitor, along with a pack of mounting screws and your multi-language user manual. For input-output peripherals, to the rear has one HDMI 2.0 port, one display port, one RJ45 gigabit LAN port, two USB 3.2 ports, the power input and its exhaust vent. To the front has two more USB 3.2 ports, one USB Type-C display port and an audio headphone jack. And below this mini PC has four anti-skid rubber pads, a pair of screw holes for mounting to the included bracket, a vent for the internal speaker, which is a first for me with these models, and four screws to remove the bottom cover that gives you access to its internal components, such as its RAM modules, its M.2 NVMe, and its 2.5 inches SATA SSD component. One thing to note is that it's recommended that you only use solid state drives for expandable storage as regular hard drives that has a motor will induce unnecessary noise to its built-in speaker. This will not happen if you use an SSD. So for mounting to the back of your monitor, using the two black screws secure the bracket to the back of your monitor using the designated screw holes. This will not work on televisions as there is no allocated screws to match the bracket. Once this is done, then attach the two gold screws to the screw holes to the bottom plate of the mini PC. These screws have grooves to snap into the bracket for easy placement or removal. So the TK11 comes with Windows 11 out of the box and after you have completed the Windows Startup Wizard by connecting to your internet network and logging into your Microsoft account, you are taken to the Windows 11 desktop. One of its prime features is its fingerprint sensor. After you log into your Microsoft account and created a password, you can then proceed to add an extra layer of security by adding a fingerprint login option. The process is simple. 
simply open the settings area under accounts and under signing options you can choose to use a pin password pattern or fingerprint So this is your Windows operating system and under system information, you can see that it's Windows 11 Pro. It's a 64-bit operating system and it has a base clock speed of 2.4 GHz on the Tiger Lake Intel Core i5 CPU. Also, if you scroll down on the product key and activation, it shows that this version of Windows is activated with a digital license linked to my Microsoft account. Let's now look at some of the features you get with this hardware. First, you have a 4K 2160p resolution up to 60Hz with HDR through the HDMI 2.0B port. You can also get 8K at 60Hz via the display port. You get screen orientation to portrait mode, portrait mode flipped, and landscape mode flipped. This comes in handy when using vertical displays and projectors. You can use up to four displays at the same time, duplicated or extended. This is done using the HDMI port, the display port, the Type-C port, and the fourth can be done via wireless casting. This comes in handy while multitasking and monitoring various activities at the same time. It has a night light mode, which can be adjusted to decrease the strain on your eyes from blue light. For gaming and rendering graphics, you get Open GLES version up to 4.6 and it has a Vulkan version 1.2 support. For surround sound audio, you have 7.1 speaker configuration and it can deliver Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, DTS HD Master Audio, Dolby Surround and Dolby True HD when connected to a surround sound audio receiver that supports these various audio formats. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio, with powerful This is the left channel. Next, we have the center channel. If all you have is a monitor with no speakers, the TK11 has a built-in speaker that provides audio automatically once it detects there is no other speaker connected. You can also choose to set audio through the internal speaker manually even though it's connected to a monitor or TV that has speakers. So with all of these great features, there are lots of things you can do for work and entertainment on this mini PC. For work-related activities, you can install the full suite of Microsoft Office applications to edit your documents and projects. Also, if you are into coding, you will find that apps such as Notepad++ will come in handy. 
browsing the web is a breeze, as you can install any web browser you like, such as Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome, among many others. If you are into video editing, the TK11 is powerful enough to edit videos using your favorite video editor in 4K resolution without freezing or slowing down, and that's a big improvement over the Intel Celeron models. For media, you can watch premium movie services such as Netflix, Disney Plus, and Amazon Prime Video in HD and 4K with HDR and surround sound audio such as Dolby Atmos. It also provides HDCP protection. For playing videos, you can play your self-hosted 4K HDR videos in various formats such as MPEG Layer 2, AVI, MKV, and TS without the need for any third-party media player such as VLC. The default movie and the TV player now has the ability to play these formats and produce HDR display with various audio and video codecs available for Windows on the Microsoft Store. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico, but the head-to-head -head goal difference is what... For gaming and graphics rendering, the Intel Iris Xe takes mini PC gaming to the next level. With smooth graphics and fast gameplay, the TK11 plays big name game titles on medium graphics settings at 1080p resolution smoothly. And for those interested in emulation gaming, the PCSX2 PlayStation 2 emulator plays smoothly at a 1080p resolution with 8-bit textures enabled. It also plays at 1440p, but it's a bit slower. And now a look at its benchmarks and where it places on my chart. First, its RAM copy speed and internal storage read and write speeds. The Nova Bench app shows that it has a RAM copy speed of 27,155 megabytes per second. Its M.2 NVMe SSD has a read speed of 1,555 megabytes per second and a write speed of 1,726. These are high scores compared to Intel Celeron models. Next, we have the results of its Wi-Fi 6 dual bands 
and its gigabit Ethernet LAN speed test. Based on my network speed of 250 megabits per second, the 5 GHz band and the LAN port achieved 100% of the speed of my network, and the 2.4 GHz band achieved 81%. Compared to other mini PCs, its 2.4 GHz band performs over than what is expected. In the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark, based on a CPU base frequency of 2.42 GHz and a max frequency of 4.1 GHz, its Intel Core i5 11-35G7 CPU got a score of 1,372 single core and 4,122 multi core. These are great scores, higher than most of the mini PCs on my chart. For its graphics benchmark, it scored 46,304 in the iStorm Extreme test, 12,972 in the CloudGate test, and 1,230 in the Time Spy test. These are also great scores, which resulted in the fantastic gameplay you just saw. And for rank placement, it scored 503,771 in the Antuto benchmark and 4,362 in the PC Mark 10 comprehensive benchmark. These are both great scores. Let's now see where it ranks on the chart. So I've entered the scores on my mini PC rankings chart and the Ace Magician DK11 is at position number 1 in reference to PC Mac 10 and Antutu benchmark scores, making it the most powerful mini PC I've reviewed thus far. You can view this chart on my blog in a full spreadsheet format where you can maximize it for full screen viewing using the option in the bottom right corner. This chart gives you all the various benchmark scores and features in comparison to all other PCs I've reviewed. I've also placed the price comparison pages using these links right here. See the link to this chart in the description below this video. And to close off my demonstrations as promised, I would now demonstrate using this mini PC as a powerful Android TV box to watch streams of movies and TV shows as well as for Android gaming. There are currently a number of alternative operating systems you can install on Windows hardware that gives you access to Android, but the two most popular ones by far are Android x86 and Fire OS. Installing Android x86 on this mini PC is very challenging as Intel has changed the way you can access and install Grub on their BIOS. At first, I had no success installing Android x86 or Fire OS as I was totally blocked from launching their installers. However, after painstaking trial and error and research, I finally found a way. Though it's not straightforward, but it allows you to install alternative operating systems on expandable storage using Grub. Information about this process would have to be done in a separate video. So here I've installed Android 12 x86 mobile version, and with this version, you get full access to the Google Play Store and Google Play services. However, there are some games that are having difficulty accessing your Google Play data. You get a CPU clock speed of 4.2 GHz and you have the option to install 32-bit and 64-bit apps and games. You get 4K display with open GLES 3.2 Mesa support. You get dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. This firmware version is Android 12 x86 snow cone version. On the Android, with its internal cooling fan, the CPU temperature is maintained around 42 degrees Celsius and you get the Dolby Atmos and basic DTS audio. On the Android x86, you get YouTube in 1080p only. You can install Kodi and streaming APKs without issues. It plays 1080p videos really well, but not 4K. One of the interesting things about this mini PC on the Android x86 is that the audio comes through its internal speaker and automatically switches to the headphone jack once connected. I cannot get audio to pass through HDMI. In comparison to Android TV boxes, it got an Antutu benchmark score of 560,803. This is higher than any TV box on my ranking chart, even the Nvidia Shield. However, it also costs twice as much and has many compatibility issues still in development. For a more complete solution to converting this mini PC into a super Android TV box is by using the FireOS alternative operating system. 
To install FidoS on this mini PC from the BIOS is totally different than how you would install Android x86 and a demonstration on how to do that would also have to be done in a new FidoS demonstration video. With that said, with the latest version of FidoS 14.1, the version that's designed for 9th to 11th generation CPUs with Iris GPUs, the performance on the Android is triple compared to Android TV boxes, so much that it got an Antutu benchmark score of 794,578. There is no TV box in existence that even comes close to this benchmark score. Another interesting and long-awaited development with FidoS is that I discovered on my own how to route the latest version 14.1 without Google Play services freezing up every time you try to open the Play Store or any Android app after you root the subsystem. To find out how this is done, be sure to subscribe to my channel to receive a notification when I release that video and it will be done in the coming weeks. With FidoS running on this mini PC, you get 4K 2160p at 60Hz resolution with HDR and screen rotation. For graphics, its GPU is clocked at 1300 MHz with Vulkan support and OpenGL ES version 3.2 Mesa support. Its CPU is clocked at 4.2 GHz with support for 32-bit and 64-bit ABIs, meaning it can run both 32 and 64-bit application. At these clock speeds, its internal cooling fan keeps temperatures low at around 45 degrees Celsius. For video streaming, you can watch YouTube in 4K 2160p resolution, but you don't get it in HDR. You can watch Netflix in HD quality with HDCP protection on the Chromium browser. This also applies for all premium movie services. You can also run Netflix on the Android subsystem using the modified version. However, the subsystem only has Google Widevine Level 3 with no HDCP protection, so it will only show in 480p quality on the modified app. You can install Kodi and install all your add-ons in one click from your backup file and you can install any streaming APK of your choosing on the Android subsystem and you can connect your wireless Bluetooth remote and navigate these apps using the direction pad. You also get audio through the HDMI port under this version of FidoS. And for Android gaming, this is where FidoS really performs as it has Vulkan support with open GLES version 3.2 unlike Android x86 version that only has open GL with no Vulkan support. You can set your Android games on the highest graphics level possible without freezing or throttling. And you can use gamepad key mapping apps because it has root access. And now here's a look at the rest of the benchmarks under FidoS. It has a RAM copy speed of 37,495. Most Android boxes, even the high-end ones, don't go above 5,000. In the Geekbench 4, it got 6,328 single-core and 20,617 multi-core. Most TV boxes, multi-core speeds never exceeds 3,000. In the 3 d Mark graphics benchmark, all three tests maxed out, which speaks volume of its gaming performance. In summary, the Ace Magician TK11 is my best mini PC to date and they are only just getting started. There are no cons with this mini PC and its performance is even better than some desktop PCs and laptops. There is only one concern with this model and that is it's not cheap, but you can get a discount coupon on the checkout page. So if you are interested in this super powerful mini PC, you can get up to $90 off the current price on the Amazon store.
to take advantage, see the link in the description below this video. So viewers, there you have it. I would like to give a special shout out to East Magician for sending the high-end model for review. The price of this model is not for the budget user, but I highly recommend it if you value hardware performance for gaming and if you're looking for a killer device to run alternative operating systems such as Android x86 and Fido OS, as this mini PC will exceed your expectations. So give this video the thumbs up if the information and presentation was of great value. If you have any questions about what you saw in the video and don't understand, feel free to put it in the comments or send me an email. If this is your first time watching my videos and feel a bit overwhelmed, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell to receive updates and explanations about various products I review. Thanks for watching, stay tuned and I look forward to my update video on how to set up FidoS on this and upcoming mini PCs.